その正義とやら準ずるがいい Hey there guys, the Gov Routine here. Welcome to Fire Emblem Awaken No, not Awakening. Fire Emblem If, uh, the new trailer analysis. Now, I'm well aware that <laughs> the trailer for this game came out in April, beginning of April, and I promised you guys that I would do a trailer analysis of it then. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what to say except for, uh, I got really lazy, and I know that's no excuse, but looking at the bright side now, it's actually, I'm actually on summer break from my college. So now I have a bunch of free time to do videos and stuff. So do my friends. So I'm going to try to get some more recording done over the summer. I'm also going to try to get a job so I can afford some new stuff too. Like new games. Maybe even a capture card for the 3DS. So that would be cool. Uh, but anyway, that's not what you guys are here to hear. Let's uh, get talking about what we saw in the Fire Emblem, Wait, Fire Emblem If trailer. And uh, I guess... A good thing about me waiting a little bit was that there was a Gamatsu leak made of Fire Emblem If, and it revealed a bunch of new information. So let's just go down the list of points that I have, and it is a pretty long list. It's like a page and a half of notes I have. Uh, so let's try to get them all hammered out. Alright, so first thing is that in this game, there are three different paths that you can take. You can side with the Nor, which is like the war-seeking kingdom. You can side with Hoshido, who's just trying to repel uh, the Nor invasion. Um, or there's also a third path. The third path is you side with neither Nor or Hoshido. Not a lot of information has been revealed about that path yet, but that really does seem like the path that I'd be interested in taking. Um, although probably the first path I'd want to do is Nor. Because on the Nor path, uh, well basically Nor and Hoshido, they're basically like two almost different games. Uh, the Hoshido path is a lot like Fire Emblem Awakening and uh, Sacred Stones. And the fact that you can travel around the map, experience and money are not limited by any sense. In fact, uh, just like in Awakening, how they have leaking boxes for you to summon risen to the uh, map to battle them. In this game, they're going to have something like that, where you pay for an item, and it'll put you into an encounter with an enemy. Uh, another thing to note is that those enemies that are very risen-like are actually called Nosferatu in this game. Alright, so, and the Nor Path 
Uh, it's going to be like Fire Emblem 7 where there's no breaks in between the chapters except for pro if, except for story. Um, there's go it's going to be harder and there's going to be more different objectives like defend a certain area for a period of time or things like that like seizing the throne more like traditional Fire Emblem uh, goals and level. Alright, so next thing I want to talk about is an ability that you guys saw through the trailer. It's when the uh, the main character, the avatar, uh, creates like a bridge across a valley. That's called the Dragon's Vein. It's apparently a special ability used by uh, the main character as part of the royal family, and he's not the only one able to use it. All of the royal family in Nor and Hoshido can use uh, this Dragon's Vein ability, which will allow them to create new, just like terraform, create earthquakes, things like that. So, I'm really curious to see how that'll play into the whole uh, game, because it'll be interesting to see like you and your enemies like changing up the terrain. So, yeah. Uh, next thing, uh, the dancer that we've all seen in these uh, trailers so far, who remains so much of a mystery. Information about her has been revealed. It turns out that her name is Aqua. And Aqua is actually a lot like the main character. Uh, except her circumstances are sort of opposite. The main character was born to Hoshido royalty but was kidnapped by Nor and was raised by them. Aqua was the opposite. She's the princess of the Nor kingdom, but she was taken by Hoshido and raised by them. So, again, no matter which path you take, I, I should probably mention this too, no matter which path you take in the end, uh, Aqua will always be with you. So, I'm interested, I'm interested to see how what her relationship with the uh, main character will be like considering that they're kind of opposites. Uh, let's see. Another thing that we saw in this trailer briefly is enemies can now dual support. Just like your uh, units could uh, dual support an awakening by standing next to each other, the enemies can do the same thing. So that'll definitely add a little more, a bit more difficulty to the game. Um, Now, what you're probably thinking is, oh no, the enemy units can pair up, what if they all just like keep pairing onto the same unit, and, well, actually, no, that's a horrible example, what am I talking about? But, uh, I don't know what the hell I'm trying to say anymore, as you can see, I'm just stumbling through this, even with notes, I'm horrible at doing this shit. <laughs> um, but, uh, dual supporting is not the same as them pairing up, like in Fire Emblem Awakening, you put, you could stack two units on top of each other. It's not what they're doing. As long as like, they don't actually like stack, they're just standing next to each other. Give them, I, I guess they give them like uh, stat boosts and uh, possibly an extra attack and maybe even like a dual guard too. That would be interesting to see an enemy dual guarding. Hmm. Uh, let me see. This is all okay. Uh, and yeah. Yeah, my notes are all over the place, so I gotta like skip around, try to find the next point that's related. Um, but the dual up system and the pair up system has actually been changed in this game. Instead of uh, what it was like in Awakening, there are two things that a paired up unit can do. They can t well, they can take two different stances: an attack stance and a guard stance. So you won't have a I'm guessing you won't have a chance of both a dual attack and a dual guard in the same uh, skirmish. I'm guessing what's going to happen is you're going to either have a have the second unit dual attack with you, or they're going to guard you. E it can, it's going to be either or in this case. And when you're using the guard stance, you're apparently going to have a shield gauge, which I guess will show. Uh, I guess. I guess that. Uh, Again, I'm only speculating here because not a lot of uh, information was revealed about the shield gauge. I'm just guessing that apparently it's going to be like that's how much damage the unit can guard you from. Because in Awakening, dual guard was kind of broken. <laughs> it, 
if it was high enough, like, you could block every hit of an Astra, even. I remember that actually happening to me a couple times when I was playing through. Yeah, but anyway. Back with the, uh, main character. Just like in Awakening, they are completely customizable appearance-wise. We haven't heard a lot about how their stats play in. I don't know if they're going to be like the Avatar character from Awakening, where you can set their, like, asset stat and their flaw stat. I'm kind of hoping that is going to come back, because I did like that a lot. Being able to use, like, my magic main character. Um, also, one thing, one difference between uh, male and female main characters is that a female main character can actually put, like, hair accessories. Like, a customizable hair accessory. Not the case for the, uh, male unit, so... <laughs> I guess with the female unit, you could get a little more, uh, uh... Whatever the hell I'm trying to say. A little more, uh, creativity there. Um, also, the starting class for the main character is the Dark Prince or... Well, depending on gender. Dark Prince or Dark Princess. Uh, they can wield swords and what seems to be dragon stones as well. So it's kind of like... Your main character is a combination between a Miramadin, a Lord, and a Manakee. Which is pretty cool, because I always wanted to make my main character an Awakening a Manakee. I was always sad that there were no male Manakees. Uh, oh well. Um, another thing about this game is that the weapon durability system is gone. Weapons are now infinite use. Um... I don't know why they're doing that exactly. I'm not complaining, per se. I think it's pretty cool that they're doing that. It'll give you more room to use your funds, like, creatively, I guess. Instead of having to, uh, just keep buying, like, bronze swords. Or, like, silver swords to keep breaking. Like, keeping, like, uh, cluttering up your character's, uh, inventory. So I, can, I guess it is nice that they're doing that. And it'll probably make the Nor path a bit easier, because gold, again, is limited in that path, so... They are probably doing that in part for the Nor path. Probably. Again, speculation right now. I don't really know just my thoughts on the matter. Oh well. Uh, and with uh, Fire Emblem If, you get nine save files in this game, as opposed to Fire Emblem Awakening's three. Although, I have read that the save files are divided up between the three paths. Like, you get three for North, three for Hoshido, and three for the third path. Which I guess is nice, because they're all, like, their own individual games. You get your own three save files for them, and it's a nice touch. Now, in Awakening, we had, a uh, Actually, no, this isn't even starting in Awakening. That was, this was back in, uh... I think it was F. One of the ones on the DS. It might have been Shadow Dragon, but I'm, I'm probably wrong. Uh, a new mode was added in. Casual mode. That made it so that whenever a unit fell in battle, they would come back to the next chapter. So you didn't have to like deal with having lost them for the entire game. There's a actually a new mode now in IF. It's called Phoenix Mode. This is a lot more easier than Casual Mode, because what Phoenix Mode entails is that whenever a unit falls in battle, they resurrect at the beginning of the next turn. Now, Casual Mode was the, th the go-to thing I went to whenever I went through Fire Emblem Awakening, whether it was on Normal Mode, or even lunatic mode. I always played on casual. I never really did classic, because I really loved the characters way too much in that game. I didn't want to see them die, and I'm horrible at fucking strategy games. <laughs> but Phoenix mode, I assume that's just for people who are really, really bad at strategy games, or they just want to experience the story. They don't really want to have to deal with uh, calculating every single move, spending like an hour on these battles, which is understandable people, they just want to experience the story, and there's nothing wrong with that. People should just do what they want. And in case you're curious, casual mode and classic mode still exist in this game. Phoenix mode is just a new thing added on top. Alright, 
right, that's about most of what I want to talk about so far. Okay. Uh, as for the initial difficulty of the game, you have three choices just like in Awakening. You have Normal, Hard, and Lunatic Mode. I'm assuming that if you do beat Lunatic Mode, you might unlock Lunatic Plus. I'm hoping Lunatic Plus is not a thing in this game. I hate Lunatic Plus. It was so bullshit. Oh my god. But in any game, any Fire Emblem game, once you pick your difficulty, you're locked into it for the game, you can't change it. And if, however, you can change your difficulty between Normal, Hard, and Lunatic. However, again, this is what I've seen. I could be wrong with this, because they kind of phrased it weird on the uh, Serene's Forest website. But they say that it can be changed after the game starts, but you can only change it once. You can't change it back to what you had it before, and you can't change it to anything new. So if you're on normal mode and you accidentally change it to lunatic mode, you're stuck on lunatic mode. You cannot go back to normal or hard. Again, I'm not sure if that is entirely true the way that works. Um, I guess we'll see later on, because the game does come out in uh, Japan fairly, actually, what, in a month? Because this game comes out June 25th in, month, in May, in Japan. In May, yeah. It comes out in June and May. Fucking my dumbass. Okay, uh, let's see. One other thing uh, concerning units in this game. In Awakening, there were special skills that each unit got after reaching a certain level at whatever class they were. In Awakening, each character had five skill slots. In if, however, you have six skill slots. However, one of the skill slots is bigger than the others. I'm not sure if that is actually a customizable skill slot, because that could be something new, maybe like a class skill, like something only that class has, but again, we don't have a lot of information about it yet, so this is all just merely speculation. Um, as for the characters all shown in the trailer so far, those are all only, uh, the, all those characters are, the on, are only the ones related to the main character. Like, all the Hoshido characters we've seen, that's his, uh, f that's his or her family from Hoshido. And all the Nor characters, that's the Norian family. So, we haven't seen any people unaffiliated with the royal family yet. And I guess one last thing I want to touch on is... Supports... Not a lot of information has been revealed about them yet. Uh, there, put, there could possibly still be supports. I'm banking on it. There, there probably will be supports, because that was one of the main things of Awakening. But I'm not thinking that the supports are going to be like they were in Awakening, though. Where, like, you got married to a certain character, and then, like, the child from the future appears. Because I think that was mostly just Awakening's thing. Um, I doubt that if is going to have anything like that. I think the supports between the characters are mostly just going to be like, uh, friendly and platonic, not really romantic in any way. But then again, I could be completely proven wrong. Again, like I've said multiple times so far, this is just merely speculation. Not a lot of info so far. But it is definitely a lot more info than we had back in April when the direct trailer came out. And that's really all I want to talk about for this video. That's all the information I've scrounged up so far. If you guys have any information, or if I'm wrong about anything, please uh, tell me in the comments. Uh, give me your opinions, please. I love talking to you guys about this stuff. It's really interesting. I love uh, the Fire Emblem series. I want to hear you guys' thoughts on this too. So don't be shy. Go ahead and comment. And with that, I guess I will see you all next time for whatever the hell I do next. <laughs> see you guys then. Bye.